Seven of repairing a Jaguar, uh, the only Jaguar. Wow, this is it. This is this is the only Jaguar they ever built. Round of applause. Woo! We're fixing the only Jaguar. Can you believe this? <laughs> yeah, I can't do brakes. Uh, I know. I, I thought I thought we'd be starting on brakes. However. Uh, I was going to jack up the car and I remember the last time I tried to jack up the car and it was crunchy the jack went up but the car didn't raise and it just started showering metal and and that metal is uh, not supposed to shower and so we can't jack up the car until we have a safe working platform if we don't have a safe working platform you know to jack up the car and put it on jack stands I will not do brake work because um, I'm going to have to have my head in the fender well. If I have my head in the fender well, the car comes down, there's no more episodes, you know? That's that's it. Anyway, I can't jack up the car because uh, there's no solid way to jack up the car, so I have to start doing rust repairs instead. Not all the rust repairs, but I can do all the rust repairs uh, necessary to jack up the car. So what I'm going to have to do is I'm going to have to take out the front seats. I'm going to have to cut out the floor. I know the floor is bad in this car. Uh, I'm going to have to take out the seats, which I have to do anyway to put some interior trimming onto the seats. Um, rip out the carpet. I've got to cut out the floor and I've got to weld some a new metal in. I've got to weld in a new jacking point and I've got to weld in some new um, chassis points um, just so I can have it solid enough that I can jack up the car and do suspension work. So the beautiful thing about Jaguar is, is that you can just up and take the cushion seat out since there's no fasteners it's just press fitted into the seat frame. Excuse the noise there's a lot of farm work around my area. Anyway you can just remove the seat with one of these, and that's pretty groovy. And 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 the seat frame is just exposed once you take off that seat cushion. So that's cool. So we take a nice flat head and we just go. Oh, it actually came out. That's great. I have trust issues with slot screws. Let's take out the other one. I think I need penetrating fluid, Mr. Flanders. <laughs> Mr. Homer. <laughs> yeah. I think I think I'm gonna need some of this. Do you like that? Huh? Do you like this? <laughs> I'm um, a bit of a spud, sorry. The rust is actually there. As you can see, the floor through that hole. And there's also a rust hole right there, which you can all see through the um, the underside of the car. So I don't think I actually need to remove these seats. Besides, it has nothing to do with the fact that that bolt won't come off. Nope, no way, nope, <laughs> that's not why. That's what's been making noise. It's the... It's the tractors. <laughs> All those tractors decide to drag race at this time of day when I'm working on my Jag. I wish they could keep quiet while they provide my first world needs of cheap potatoes. Okay, now I want to see how we're gonna, how this cup is gonna come up. So, let's take that off. We're gonna need that, that's a kick panel. Definitely gonna need that. Put that in the back seat. And that's the toe board. Now the toe board now. Yep. Again, gonna to have to keep that with templates. Can't throw anything out at this stage. But we can throw out the um the carpet. Yep. I oh, know that's more toe board, I'm gonna to have to again keep that. Oh my god, this 
even up. There's another fucking toe board. Oh my god, guys. Guys. Didn't you know? Have you not heard? But my Jaguar. It's rusty. The Jaguar is rusty. Those are rust holes in my Jaguar. And for the steel, I've dragged it from my trash pile over there. And I've got a big sheet over here, which we'll take to the Jag. And I've got a better understanding of what's wrong with the floors now. Anything with like floor coverings here, or like a coating, survived pretty well. Um, the other sections that have rotted through not so much. So we've got a big hole there, and all that associated metal there. We've got a hole there. All the seals separated from the floor pans, and we've got a big, ugly, obvious hole there. And that's not going to be too hard to do. Uh, we'll just cut all that out and uh, weld in some new steel. I've cut a lot of rust out of the car, and there's lots of rust particles as a result. I haven't seen it yet, but here's just a section of rust I've cut out, which is from the uh, seal panel, which is, yeah, much for muchness. But look at that. <laughs> That's all old Jaguar. Just a pile of metal. And I've got night vision on because I can't even see it. Um, as you can see, it's I've cut out simple geometric shapes and I just gotta weld things back in. I've gotta finish off that cut there to make that into um, something I could weld to. And then I've got a big hole in the floor pan here otherwise the rest of the floor is perfect because none of the undercoating has uh, come up so um, yeah I'm buying some masking tape to start templating and I'll show you how I template metal and um, I'll show you how we, we're welding it in. G'day that's a hole in the floor I'm patching it now and you can watch me do it here take a look it's groovy so to show you what I'm doing with uh, fixing up the floors, um, what I need to do is I'm making a patch panel. So I've cut the metal back to where it's uh, clean, where it's good metal. Very thick metal, this Jaguar. So this is all cut back to um, clean metal now. Solid metal that I can weld to. Uh, any browning uh, really is just surface rust at this point. Um, so how I make templates to go into the floor panel here. Well, it's really quite simple. I learned this uh, patch paneling technique from a, uh, a mechanic friend. So, what you do is you get the widest uh, masking tape that you can, and you start covering up the hole. Right, so, you've got a simple, so it's all covered up. So what we do next is we take our finger, we rub it, into some grit, we go along the outside. And we're tracing, and the trick is that we're tracing the, um, the template onto the masking tape. So that's why we don't need a lot of overlap on the masking tape because, well, um, it won't show through as well. It's like tracing a coin on, a, on some paper. You don't want thick paper, you want cooking paper or tracing paper. Ow, fuck. Sharp. I think we've got a, a usable template here. So, we can take this out now. And apply it to our steel. Now, without handling it too much, we can take the template we just made, stick it onto this, um, piece of steel here. As you can see, there's a faint but visible line to each corner and then it terminates on this straight line here. So then we get the angle grinder out and we cut out that steel. And just like that we have a piece of uh, steel, cut the size and we can wrap, take it up just like a brand new one. Whee! I like that. All right, so now we just gotta clean this up and um, see how it fits. And then it depends on how scrappy you want to do it, but we um, have the completed piece. Um, 
It's an irregular shape, but the hole was also irregular, so that's the reason why it looks like that. So what we need to do now is we need to put this into there. And um, what you can do is you can just push it. You know, sh shaping steel isn't science. It is what it is. Shaping steel is shaping steel. I can already see that might have cut a little bit long into that. That's all right. I'll go back to you with how I shape it. Okay, so something that you should do when making these, um, you should remember what orientation the cut steel is, because I'm actually having troubles now because I thought it was this way, but it was too long and I was like, what the hell? But then I realized it's wider than it is long. Let's 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 scrub up against it. So we point up. Upwards. There we go. Nice little point upwards there. So I know that's up. Sweet. So uh, floors. Um, I'm welding them. How cool is that? just go through and you sort of just stitch weld it and you start stitch welding it um, you got to keep the heat down however um, as you can see with with my floor repairs ah, it doesn't need to be perfect doesn't it it's just adding structure back into it yes it looks ugly but that's structure and that didn't exist before um, also I still need to find steel for this section here to re-weld the, um, the seals. On Jaguars, um, this whole seal or whatever it's called um, acts as almost like a tertiary um, uh, chassis rail in the cars. This is one of the first uh, unibody cars and in saying that um, the chassis is, is welded to the body and the body forms the structure of the car. Um, there are chassis rails still here and they're quite big and from the factory um, they didn't quite understand the strength of uh, unibody construction, unitary monocoque uh, construction, uh, so they really did overbuild this car. So yes it's a unibody car however it's got a chassis rail that runs alongside the transmission, a chassis rail that runs along the floor and then you got this giant sill here, which is very characteristic of um, Jaguars, um, wishes to say that this is like huge box section metal that runs from the from the to, from the tow board here all the way back to the rear wheel arch. And on the outside of the car, it's characteristically big. It's beautiful. It's part of the seamless styling as a, um, that this car has. Go really slowly. Don't put too much, direct too much heat into one spot. And you just keep going with that, you know? It's long, but it's methodical, you know? You don't have to think too hard about it.